in Gaza. The Hamas-controlled health ministry says that more than 10,000 people have been killed. It says they've been killed by Israeli airstrikes since the conflict erupted one month ago. Now, this number has not been independently verified. Yesterday, the Israeli Defense Forces released what they said was evidence that Hamas is using hospitals and schools as cover for its attacks. Israel says that it has intensified its operations in northern Gaza, encircled Gaza City, and split the north of the Strip off from the south. All right, for more now, I'm joined by DW Special Correspondent Aya Ibrahim. She is in Jerusalem for us tonight. Aya, Israeli media, they have reported that troops are set to enter Gaza City within hours. What more do we know? We have confirmation that there is now a northern Gaza and a southern uh, Gaza, Brent, that the strip has been effectively divided. We know that uh, Israeli troops have reached the shorelines of Gaza and, as you mentioned, encircled Gaza City, you know, one of the, if not the most populated spot in the entire Gaza Strip. And so as a result, in the coming days, we can expect uh, Israeli troops and Hamas fighters to engage in close and uh, direct uh, combat. Now, we know that Hamas maintains a, a network of tunnels that spreads throughout the entire strip, but the Israeli military has always maintained that, particularly in the north, uh, that's where a, a huge concentration of that network is. And that's why, for the time being, uh, the, um, the, uh, the ground offensive has uh, been and is uh, concentrated in the northern part. This is coming uh, with a lot of uh, casualties. The uh, Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Ministry has said that t the death toll has now surpassed 10,000. Uh, These numbers, as we keep mentioning on the show, cannot be independently uh, mm. verified. Uh, independent watchdogs are not allowed in the Strip, and the few journals that have been allowed in Gaza have been so far embedded with the Israeli Defense Forces. But given that this very tiny, very densely populated uh, piece of land has been under near constant bombardment for uh, more than two weeks now, we can expect that the death toll is very high. But again, we are not allowed in there, and it's very, very difficult to get a full picture of what is going on uh, on the ground in Gaza at the moment. The Israeli military, it says that they are allowing a one-way corridor for civilians to head south. I mean, is that a safe option for people to flee from the fighting? Well, the Israeli military has been calling on uh, Gazan civilians to move from the north to the south for a while now. Uh, our viewers may remember that first uh, call for evacuation uh, where the deadline was, was initially just a, a couple uh, uh, of days, which was deemed impossible by international observers. Um, and so uh, we know that a lot of uh, Gazans have indeed made it south, an estimated 800,000 have evacuated. Uh, but there remains around 300,000 in the northern part, part of the Gaza Strip. And there are many reasons for that. Uh, what we keep hearing from people is that they just don't feel safe going to the south because there have been targets struck in the south as well. We've also heard reports that on the way from the northern part to the southern part, uh, people have also sometimes been struck uh, by uh, 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 rockets um, and, and, and airstrikes. There's also, you know, the, 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 the reality is that there might not be people who, who are able to evacuate. And communication has been cut off a number of times uh, you know, uh, to the Gaza Strip. So it may also be that people are just not getting that uh, mm. information with internet and telecommunications being so unreliable. It's something that we also have to deal with, you know, trying to get in touch with our colleagues every day on the ground. It is very, very difficult to, to be in touch with people in Gaza right now. And so all of this comes together to make this a very, very difficult situation for civilians, even if that route were, were safe. And we unfortunately have reports that people, as I mentioned, have been struck trying to get from the north to the south. DW Special Correspondent Aya Ibrahim reporting tonight from Jerusalem. Aya, thank you. Egypt has reopened its Rafah border crossing with Gaza for foreign nationals and medical evacuees, but the vast majority of Gazans remain trapped with nowhere in the territory truly safe. In Gaza, the human cost of this conflict keeps on mounting. As the small strip of land continues to be pummeled, 
the Israel Defense Forces say they opened a humanitarian corridor. This allowed Palestinians to evacuate the north, where the bombardments are heavier. Though it seems that nowhere in the Strip is truly safe. An Israeli airstrike hit a residential building in a densely populated district of Khan Yunis in southern Gaza. They are all children, not a single adult, all children. The whole building collapsed on them. These are your goals, Netanyahu. May God take revenge on you. Hundreds of thousands of displaced Gazans are now living in makeshift shelters in the south of the Strip as Israel intensifies its bombardments. For this hospital employee, just one missile strike took everything away. I was working my shift at the hospital when the casualties started arriving. To my shock, I saw among those martyred were my wife, Maysoon, as well as our four children, the youngest of which was eight months old. It's an all too familiar story for many living in the Gaza Strip. The war between Israel and Hamas shows no sign of letting up. And it's the people on the ground who are paying the heaviest price of all. The Jordanian Air Force has dropped vital medical equipment to a hospital in Gaza as supplies in the Strip run dangerously low. The airdrop was made to the Jordanian hospital in Gaza City and contained medical supplies as well as food. Jordan's King says the operation was carried out in coordination with Israel's defense forces. There are growing calls for more humanitarian aid for Gaza. The Rafah crossing from Gaza into Egypt has now reopened after it was shuttered for days. I asked Ahmed Al-Mandari of the World Health Organization in Cairo how much of a difference that this will make. In fact, you know, as you said uh, today, uh, Rafah crossing will be opened, in fact, but uh, I don't have details on uh, how many people will be crossing, but definitely it will include people who are, you know, carrying um, uh, different nationalities as well as, you know, casualties and sick patients. Uh, this will definitely, definitely help those uh, people who are injured, uh, you know, severely. They need uh, further care outside Gaza uh, Strip. Um, in addition to that, you know, it will, it will give hope for hundreds and thousands of people who are seeking medical care outside Gaza. But still, I must say, this is really beyond, beyond the high demand and the need of the people inside Gaza. It should be really opened all the time with no interruption. Ilan Levy is a spokesperson for the Office of the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. The Hamas-run health ministry today said that the death toll in Gaza has now exceeded 10,000 and that many of the victims are civilians. My colleague Gerhard Elfers asked him how the Israeli government is justifying that. First of all, as you mentioned, these are the numbers we're getting from the Hamas Health Ministry. Hamas, the same organization that on October 7th burned, beheaded, raped, butchered, mutilated its way through southern Israel and then lied about it to the international media. The same Hamas that when an Islamic jihad rocket hit the al Ahly hospital immediately claimed it was an Israeli airstrike that killed hundreds of people. The sun came up in the morning. It turned out it wasn't an Israeli airstrike. The hospital was mm. still standing and the death toll was much lower. So we cast doubt on the Hamas numbers. We also note that but Hamas there must doesn't be thousands, distinguish whether between... it's exactly 10,000. It must be thousands. Hamas does not distinguish between civilian casualties and military casualties. We've been clear. Our goal in this war is to go after the perpetrators of the October 7th massacre and make them pay. We expect the death toll to rise from Hamas terrorists, the people we are targeting. Now, what's the problem? Hamas has a deliberate and well-documented strategy of embedding itself in civilian areas, in tunnels under people's homes. Its main headquarters are located underneath the Shifa hospital in Gaza. That's why Israel has been taking more action than any army in history, and I'm happy for your fact checkers to check me, in order to get civilians out of harm's way. 20,000 phone calls placed with residents of Gaza, 1.5 million leaflets, over 10 million recorded messages and SMS for three weeks, urging the residents 
residents of northern Gaza, get out of the way temporarily for your own safety. Mm. The army has also opened humanitarian corridors for residents to evacuate during the encirclement of Gaza. And just the other day, we had Hamas firing mortars at the Israeli soldiers, facilitating the humanitarian evacuation. So we're doing everything we can to get civilians out of harm's way. Hamas is doing everything it can to keep them there. And we mm. hold Hamas fully accountable fully accountable for any harm to civilians as a result of its decision to declare war on the 7th of October and then its decision to try to use civilians as human shields. Mm. Now, Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, has pushed for a humanitarian ceasefire during his visit to several Middle East countries and several major U.N. bodies issued a joint statement demanding uh, a ceasefire. Will Israel agree to a ceasefire at some stage and when is, will that be? We will not consider any ceasefire, no matter how temporary, without the return of our hostages. There was a ceasefire on the 6th of October. Hamas broke it. It brutally murdered 1,400 people and then retreated back to the Gaza Strip. A ceasefire would literally let Hamas get away with murder. It would leave it free to do it again, this time with 240 hostages inside Gaza. And Hamas is threatening to do a second October 7th, and a third, and a fourth, as many as it takes, in order to wipe out the state of Israel and murder every mm. man, woman, and child in this country. So we will not cease fire until we achieve our war games, our war uh, goals of destroying Hamas so it can never again hurt our people and never again perpetrate what it did on October 7th, the biggest we'll massacre come, of we'll Jews since the Holocaust. We'll come to that war never again. In, a, in, a, in, a, in a moment, but Israel has stated, you mentioned the hostages, Israel has stated many times that the release of all hostages is also one of your principal war aims. But do you think an all-out military assault is a good way to ensuring they all come home? I wish we could send Hamas an email and politely ask them to relieve the hostages, but that wasn't going to happen. Our assessment is the hostages will only be brought back through pressure, through military pressure and diplomatic pressure. We saw four hostages released by Hamas because of international pressure on Hamas and its supporters. And we saw one Israeli hostage who was freed by soldiers who went in and grabbed her out. And our assessment is that only more pressure on Hamas is going to advance the goal of bringing our hostages home. Who, hostages who I should mention include over 30 children under the age of 18. There's a baby who was nine months old at the beginning of this war and is now 10 months old. There are children who are literally orphaned because Hamas murdered their parents in front of them and took them hostage inside Gaza Strip. So we're doing everything we can to bring them home. And we expect the whole world to put all possible pressure on Hamas and its supporters to release our hostages immediately mm. and unconditionally. You mentioned the uh, whole world there. Are you worried with, because you do not agree to any kind of ceasefire, that you will lose international support? We know that we're fighting the most moral fight there is, to dismantle the terror organization that perpetrated the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust and is promising to do it again and again until they murder all of us. We know that we're the good guys and we know that history is on our side. And we know that good nations have lined up behind us, like Germany, who's vice chancellor from the Greens, not exactly a party known traditionally for supporting Israel, says Hamas must be destroyed. Even Senator Bernie Sanders says there can be no ceasefire with Hamas because its goal is to eliminate the state of Israel and murder everyone. So we know that people of conscience are on our side. They understand that the right of self-defense means eliminating the terror group that perpetrated this attack and that anyone who wants to take the side of the baby burning, beheading terrorists of October 7th, they're on the wrong side of history and history will judge I'd like, them. I'd like I'd like to uh, uh, come back what you just said, eliminate, uh, eliminating Hamas. Israel is currently fighting a conventional war against insurgents, if you will. And that has failed many times in the past, in Iraq and Afghanistan, for example. How convinced are you really that you, Israel can win this war against Hamas? This is an asymmetric war. It's an asymmetric war between the professional army of a democratic state and a terrorist militia that has embedded itself inside civilian areas in order to maximize casualties. But we have no choice. We cannot leave Hamas in power. Because if we leave Hamas in power, it will attack our people again. October 7th wasn't the first date in history. History didn't start then. It's been two decades that Hamas has been terrorizing the people of Israel, firing tens of thousands of rockets against us, launching raids inside Israel, abducting people. And October 7th, was the straw that broke the back of a very strong camel. Mm. 
We cannot leave Hamas in place, and I think the world understands. And Secretary Blinken said this as well from his own conversations with Arab governments in the region, that a terror organization that perpetrates a massacre like that cannot be allowed to remain in power a moment longer. We will not go back to 6 a.m. on October 7th. That will not happen. Israel's army says uh, Gaza is now split in two. What's the goal here? The goal is to totally eliminate the entirety of Hamas's terrorist and military infrastructure. We're going after every commander, every terrorist, every tunnel, every rocket launcher, all of it. Now, we've completely encircled Gaza and despite that have still allowed several humanitarian corridors for civilians to leave. For three weeks, we've been urging civilians in northern Gaza to get out of the way temporarily for their own safety. And most of them have. Only a small minority remain in the north. Just the other day, Hamas attacked the humanitarian corridor that Israel was facilitating. They fired mortars at our soldiers who were trying to get Palestinian civilians out of harm's way because we're doing everything we can to keep civilians safe. Hamas is doing everything it can to keep them in harm's way. So the goal now is to close in on Hamas. We will destroy its tunnel network. We will destroy its arsenals and it will terrorize our people no longer. Speaking about the tunnel network, are you convinced that, for example, if uh, the hostages are being held in this tunnel network, that you can spare them, that you can get them out, out alive? I can't comment on specific operational matters, but that is a top priority in our war to bring the hostages home and safe to their families, those who still have families to return to, that is. Elon Levy there, the spokesman for the office of the Prime Minister of Israel. Thank you very much for taking the time Thank to you. talk to us. Earlier, I talked to Mkhaima Abu Sada in Khan Yunis in southern Gaza. Before the start of the war, he worked as a professor of political sciences at the university in Gaza City. He told me about his experiences. Um, I'm staying now in Khan Yunis, uh, south of Gaza, with uh, some of my relatives since uh, October 13th. On that day, the Israeli army ordered uh, uh, the Palestinians in the north of Gaza and Gaza City to evacuate to the south of uh, Gaza Valley, uh, which is uh, 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 Khan Yunis and Rafah. And mm -hmm. I have been living with my relatives for the past uh, three weeks, uh, almost mm. now. Now, I'd like to come back to Hamas, which is, of course, governing Gaza. Are they offering any assistance for civilians, or is the population just reliant on assistance and services of the aid organizations? Well, very much uh, most of the Palestinians uh, who have evacuated their homes in the north of Gaza to the, to the south are either with their relatives, like myself, or the overwhelming majority of them are residing in, uh, at UNRWA, uh, run schools and uh, uh, institutions where UNRWA is responsible for uh, uh, most of their most of the assistance that they are giving them food, uh, uh, water, and uh, they are offering also sanitational uh, services. So basically, Hamas is not doing anything right now. Uh, uh, um, either UNRWA is in charge and other international organizations, or. Uh, uh, the relatives are very much helping uh, mm. their, their friends and relatives who evacuated uh, to, their, to the south of Gaza. Now, you're a political scientist. Uh, let's talk about the support that Hamas uh, had and maybe still has inside Gaza and among the local population. Well, that is, uh, to be honest with you, that is not, uh, there is no way of measuring uh, Palestinian uh, support for Hamas at the current moment. Uh, you have to take into consideration that there are more than 10,000 Palestinians have been killed since this Israeli uh, bombardment against uh, Gaza. A civilian population has started, and also more than 20,000 uh, people have been injured, in addition to the uh, 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 destruction that has been inflicted on uh, many areas of the Gaza Strip. So uh, uh, there is no way of knowing whether people are still supporting mm. Hamas in a big way or not. And uh, uh, there are also no channels of uh, uh, expressing any, of, any voices uh, criticizing Hamas. If there is any criticism against Hamas, it's done within uh, in our closed circles. Mm. Now, Israel's aim is, um, as uh, Israel has said many times, to fully destroy Hamas. Is that realistic, you think? 
It doesn't seem to me that is a very realistic goal uh, for a number of reasons. For, first of all, it's been a month since Israel has started its war against Hamas, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, Israel has succeeded only in eliminating some top leaders of the military wing of Hamas, and uh, the Israelis are also having very trouble, uh, a lot of troubles in uh, controlling large areas of, of with, with the ground operation. And second, uh, uh, when, when we talk about Hamas, we are not talking only about uh, uh, the, the military wing of Hamas. We're talking also about Hamas as a, a grassroots organization which has entrenched itself among the population in the Gaza Strip. So when you talk about an ideology and about an idea, it, it's very hard to destroy it or to eliminate it completely. But I think uh, uh, Hamas has been weakened by the ongoing Israeli bombardment and, uh, and also uh, 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 the ground operation that has mm. been uh, carrying on uh, for, for a number of days now. The political scientist Mahima Abu Sada there talking to us from Gaza. Thank you very much for your time.